Hey everyone, welcome to Jojo's World. Good day. Hello. Or good night, depending on where you are right now. Could be day, could be night, could be the hour of twilight where reality grows thin. And the twilight, dark creatures from a fantastical dimension impinge upon our own. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess releasing soon in 2008. Uh, yes. Yes, lest we forget, this is JoJo's World, our JoJo's Bizarre Adventure recap and discussion podcast, where we are talking about the 2000-ish anime Bubblegum Crisis, Tokyo, Tokyo 2040. 2040. T. Did you hear how good I lined up our two different audio tracks then? <laughs> You can just hear us being like, yeah, yeah, we, we can do it in post, but why would we? Are we cowards? No. Cowards fix in post, heroes run it live. <laughs> I'm Liam S. Smith, reporting for JoJo's World. And I'm Nick Valentine, the other person who's also reporting in, I guess, from the same helicopter. And Nick, everyone is so excited to hear your report uh, that you promised you would do in last episode uh, about your search for hot lemonade or a similar drink. <laughs> I forgot to look for it. But, <laughs> I knew you would. But I can confirm, today when I was getting a hot chocolate, I did have a nice warm lemon cake. That's nice. It was like, a you know the things they put on top of the little lid? They're like little cute Oh yeah, it's a, a little sweetener, a yeah. little sugar cookie. Yeah, or... it was like a lemony cake thing. Um, so not a lemonade, but you know. But he could have dropped it into your hot chocolate and gotten halfway there. <laughs> Uh, Nick, Yes. Uh, before we get into this week's episodes, I just want to address a bit of listener correspondence from listener of the show and corresponder uh, Dim Pilot on Twitter. Ooh. Of course, we were talking um, about uh, Machine Head last mm-hmm. week, mm-hmm. being the name of one of the episodes, if I recall. Maybe yep. that was a recent episode. I don't remember the names of the episodes of this show from week to week. And frankly, it's insulting of you to inspect me to. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you only made it. Uh, Dim Pilot got in touch to remind us that the first song of Deep Purple's Machine Head is Highway Star. And of course, oh. we saw Highway Star in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable. Nick, do you remember what Highway Star did? Is he Nutrients Guy? Yes. <gasps> yes! The, and he has the... the feet that chase you and suck your nutrients. Wait, weren't they hands? No, they were feet, because feet move along the ground. Ah, that makes sense. <laughs> but I thought... In our in our world that we live in, in the JoJo's world, anything can be on the ground. Oh my god. That's right. Uh, and they also let us know, they loved our last episode, you love to see it. <laughs> uh, they Their speculation, uh, mm-hmm. wildly un... Um... <laughs> Unfounded and frankly un- unnecessary. <laughs> uh, speculation, uh, we were t- of course we were talking about the Leon Pion stuff oh, last yes. week. The, they the they speculate horrifics. that Pion means cool or something like that because Haruko of FLCL says in regards to the guitar, mm. chicks dig it, dude, Pion, before wasting our main character with an AK for questioning her. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's an airsoft rifle, ignore the casings. <laughs> okay, all right. That's a direct quote from a listener of the show. <laughs> I have not watched FLCL, but I understand it's one of those Early mid two thousands things that was in the the rotation. Yeah, it's one of those shows that I would love to watch because it's like it's very kind of coming of age, but like Samurai Champloo esque coming of it's age. It's coming story. of age, but Samurai Champloo. Yeah, you know, it's like a cool show where nothing makes sense until it does, and you're like, oh, anime. Nick, we've talked about this um, at the end of recent episodes, but if anyone tunes out uh, for our very brief bookkeeping segments, our increasingly brief bookkeeping segments, I would just acknowledge, of course, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6, Part 2 has, of course, exploded onto your Netflix queue as of uh, yesterday, as of this recording. Rich and creamy, filled with a delightful jam filling of weird... You want to take that again, or...? No, that's that's (laughs) what I want to say. (laughs) Sure. Okay. Um... We're not watching it yet. Uh, We're, of course, (laughs) releasing this episode on Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040. Then we will be doing one more just to get this story to a uh, convenient stopping point for us to drop it for six months or so Mm. while we uh, catch up on the new JoJo content. Will I remember anything about Bubblegum Crisis after the JoJo content? Well, ultimately, that's up to you, and I would like well, it if you would like at least gave yourself a bit of a refresher yeah. before we came back to it. I mean, given that I couldn't even remember to look for hot lemonade... We're doomed. We're doomed. That's it. I'm going to come back and be like, so what is a boomer? And you'll be like, no, Nick, we're in boomer territory now. So uh, that puts um, the first Stone Ocean Part 2 
episode of the podcast about a month from when you're first hearing this, mm-hmm. which is in line with the about a month I wanted to wait to watch ahead and take notes of any important things to reflect back on as we get up to it. Nice. So stay tuned, listeners. Don't touch that dial. There's more JoJo's world coming down the pipes, stabbing you in the eyes like that scene from The Phantom where someone looks through a (laughs) microscope and stabs themselves in the eyes and the guy goes, you won't be needing these anymore and crushes their spectacles in his hands. (laughs) God, if there's one thing I want to be in this world, it's someone who gets to say, we would be needing these anymore, and then do something evil. You have that within you. But, like, what would I do? Like, I can't just, like, stab a guy in the eyes and then crush his, like, glasses, right? I can't do that. (laughs) The only thing stopping you is your weak ethics, old man. (laughs) Would I, like, take someone's, like, oh, I don't know. I'd take someone's, like, chocolate bar. And then be like, we won't be needing this anymore. And then I'll take like their, their like hand wipe or something. That's the best I can. That's s- weak. I know. That's the thing. I can't, I can't be evil here. Like I can't chop off someone's hand and be like, we won't be needing these gloves anymore. <laughs> Cause like they will be missing hands. Nick, so. the first of uh, today's episodes yep. is uh, made in Japan. Much like the whole show was made in Japan. Oh. Uh, This is a a double live album by Deep Purple recorded during their first tour of Japan in August 1972. There's a lot of Deep Purple references in this show. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we know uh, that Deep Purple are sort of hard rock or heavy metal. Mm Mm-hmm. You know it. Machine Head, good song. Album. Album. Good album. That's the one. Machine Head was the last episode, if I remember correctly, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Or a recent one. We just can't be expected to know these things. It's impossible to remember anything. Look, we get a bit loosey-goosey during the off-season. You know it, you're gonna, you expect it, you love it. Those JoJo World boys, so relaxed, you say. We're going to come back to main JoJo's like content and everyone's going to be like, what the fuck happened? They, they, <laughs> they said forgot they were... how to read. <laughs> yeah, they started off being so good and doing their research and now they're so old, so wise. We are, we are very wise. Hmm. If there's one thing that we are, it is wise. I, okay, I can't get over this. I washed my hands before coming in here with, you know, soap. Good. As you do. In, in, with Where the are hand- you going with this? You have set, like, a good scented hand wash. Thank and you. Every time I, like, stroke my chin, I get a whiff of this hand wash. I might cut this derail, Nick. I'm not gonna lie. But it's like, my finger smells like cinnamon, and then my palm smells like, like a tree. The album was an immediate commercial success, particularly in the US, where it was accompanied by the top five hit Smoke on the Water and became a steady seller throughout the 1970s. If there's one song that everyone learns on guitar, it's Smoke on the Water. That's true. It's literally one of the easiest songs on the planet to learn. Yeah. And everyone plays it wrong. But that's fine, you know? But you, you play it right? I play it right, yeah. So normally you'd play it like this. I'm, I'm gesturing two fingers. But actually you play it like this. Okay, Nick's making yeah. hand motions for guitars, yeah. which I refuse to compensate for his inability to articulate. A lot of people play power chords. It's actually just an inverted power chord. There were a lot of bootlegs of this album, so eventually they released, like, of the live performances that went into this album. Wait, so really? Eventually they released their own to get in on the action. Huh, how interesting. What year was this released? 1972? Double check. What? Yeah, 1972. What bootlegs come out in 1972? Like handheld camcorder stuff, I guess. I guess, but like back in the day, handheld camcorders were like yay big, weren't they? Nick is holding his hands uh, like he just caught a fish this big. (laughs) Like... The lens itself is like as big as my palm. I really don't need to really litigate the logistics of... Of piracy. Yeah, we got a lot of ground to cover today. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, and the second episode we are watching today is Atom Heart Mother which is, of course, named for the uh, fifth studio album by Pink Floyd and was Mm. represented in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable, by the stand of Yoshikage Kira's ghost dad, Atom Heart Father. That makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Famously the man who got trapped in a photograph and flew a crow with some dental floss or whatever. Yeah, he had perfect abilities to go wherever he wanted with that crow. A beautiful crow. A wise creature. A wise, a wise crow. Uh, and we have talked about Adam Hart Mother on that episode, so listen to that episode. Boost our metrics. Do it. So, Nick. Yes. 
a lot, we cover a lot of ground in these two episodes. Mm. A lot of ground and also a lot of nothing. You could say that they could have spaced out a lot of these revelations over the course of the preceding six episodes. Dozen episodes. But no. No, they're all... They had to build some mystery first, but now they're solving that mystery. No, they're unveiling it and solving it within the same two sentences. No, no. Like, there was the mystery of Marky before. Uh, remember, there were all those photos where we couldn't see his mm, face. It's uh, true. It's just they're explicitly drawing attention to it in dialogue now, mm. when before it was just, like, distinct camera shots. Yeah, that's true. And also Nene just being like, but think about it. And there's a lot more talk about um, the Wiz Lab and the genesis of the boomers. Mm. But what Boomer Genesis, of course, one of the uh, <laughs> most famous boomer bands. <laughs> boomer Genesis? Yeah. You know Genesis? Yeah, I know Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, we left off on a cliffhanger last time, where yeah. this huge Metal Gear boomer has gone nuts. A big military-grade experimental it's boomer. Ju- it's just Metal Gear Sahelanthropus, right? Yeah. It's got missile pods. It's uh, got machine it walks guns. walks upright. It mutates more over the course of the episode and gets a bit of that, um, that, that one bit in Evangelion where Shinji's Eva goes berserk. Mm. Uh, which, which, of course, know, you but don't know. No. But, but listeners do, because almost, I'm, I'm 100% certain that all of our listeners have watched... Uh, more anime than you. Fair. Fair <laughs> enough. Because why would you listen? Have have they watched more anime than you? Probably, yeah. Shit, guys. <laughs> that's a lot of anime. I mean, that's kind of my brand, though, you know? What, not watching anime? Yeah, not watching anime other than for this podcast. Have I watched more anime than you? No. Maybe? I'd say no. we're probably about even. Yeah, all right. It's that's just that I'm more... Culture? I'm, I'm ruder about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's this boomer. It's attacking the city. Uh, Leon and Daly are like, oh, this is a big boomer. How are we going to stop it? And they basically spend the whole episode watching from an overpass. Yeah. Pretty much everyone that we see, like Celia, the AD police. Celia's in the command center. Mm. Uh, Nene's stuck at work in the AD police call center. Lena's in... Somewhere I was going to say feudal Japan, but that's not right. She's in rural Japan. (laughs) Rural Japan. (laughs) And everyone who's talking about the scenario is like, it's just like war. It is. It's just like war. But this isn't a battlefield. It's a literal war machine. Yeah. So it's the scale of it. They're like, wow, we've never seen anything like it before. Mm -hmm. But they have. So uh, there's a great exchange. Um, Pris runs into the Night Saber Command Center. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's running to go get changed because there's huge boomers on the loose. And then as she's running, um, she (laughs) tells Cilia that Lena's currently in the countryside and then she stops for a second says oh yeah and i forgot to tell you she might not be coming back and then just keeps running she gives like a little wink yeah and then just goes on uh meanwhile in the countryside lena is like i do need to go back should i or should i not i should she talks to her date and is like you are a very nice man but i'm more interested in pris and also fighting robots can you please buy me a train ticket an interesting priority there. And he's like, yes, I respect you chasing your interests. No, no, don't make it out like he was respectful. He was. He said... I think this was kind of a subtitle thing. Yeah, but he was Because like, you've got to remember they talked last week a lot about, like, how valuable it is to, like, chase what you value. Mm. But he literally responds with, I think I get you. I think I understand you. You don't always do the right things. That's not what he said. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, all right. Uh, And Nene is stuck in the call centre, taking, like, scrambling all units. And she's like, oh my god, everyone calm down. I'm just part of the AD police. There's nothing I can do. The military show up to fight the boomer and Leon and Daly are like, the military want to fight it. I guess we're not needed here. They want to clean up their own mess. Marky helps is helping Cilia in the command centre, but he doesn't really do anything for a while. (laughs) Okay, so I'm pulling up this quote from... Did we even get a name for this guy? What guy? Lina's date. Uh, it wasn't Mason. <laughs> what if it was, though? Ooh. It was, it was something like Takagi or something like that, wasn't it? I'm sure you made that up. Or, okay, I don't actually Mr. have the quote. Mr. Musagai or something? That feels borderline racist. That's a name! <laughs> Musagai is a name, isn't it? Am I? How are you spelling that? M-U-S-A-G-A-I. Musagai. Oh no. Oh no. The top articles. Is Musagai just a racist word? Oh no. I'm not really seeing anything. Oh no, it's Musagi. Oh no. Oh. Well, Nick, consider yourself owned. Fuck. Well. Well. I failed well, everything. Cancel this has us. been JoJo's world. 
Okay, more talk about this mad boomer. Lena's on the train. Ah, sorry, I do have the lines because she's on the train. Then we flash back. Mm. She's like, I'm sorry, I've got to go back to Neo Mega Tokyo. Neo Mega Cyber Tokyo. And he's all like, I think I get that. She's like, I think you're a good man, but I got other priorities. He's like, I am. And he says, it's what you want to do, isn't it? I think I understand you somehow. Somehow, some, sometimes you can't do things right. And I think it might not be a good idea to come back home. Mm. He's saying like, you know, sometimes you can't don't, win. don't set aside your dreams for this small town life. Yeah. Yeah. And she says, thank you. You're as kind as I thought. Mm. TLDR, work for the corporate machine in Mega Tokyo all the time. And then she's like, she, he probably hates me now because I asked, because I borrowed money from him. <laughs> and we never see him again. God damn. Wasted potential. A couple of other military boomers show up to fight this military boomer. Big vroom vroom. They shoot missiles at it. It's all, uh, you know, destroying residential districts. Leon and Dahlia are like, such devastation. This was not my intent. Such devastation, Daly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leon, I'm really seeing the devastation out here. Oh, right into the house. <laughs> out of nowhere. What does he say? He says, okay, yeah, this was the boomer line of the week, I think. A machine gets out of control and goes insane. Just what is a boomer? God. There's like two really good boomer lines in this one fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one fight is like half the episode. So. That's true. That's true. It's long, probably the, I would say this is probably the longest boomer engagement we've had so far. Mm. Like mostly by the time the Night Sabres get there, you know, there'll be a brief bit of back and forth that somehow symbolizes their interpersonal conflict mm. of the week and then they'll just rip its heart out. But this one is like... There's a lot of people just dying. Like, there's a lot of carnage in, like, yeah, residential yeah. areas. and The chief shows up, uh, having previously on- only been in this show to yell at Leon for doing the right thing. Uh, <laughs> he shows up to scramble the fire bee on behalf of the AD police. B spelled B-E-E. Yeah, like, bum- like the Bumblebee missile launcher in Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm, yes. Honeybee? Honeybee, I think. Sweet bee? No. The little bee. The noisy cricket. The noisy cricket. <laughs> so the boom is getting more and more mutated. Yeah, it evolves an articulating jaw. It, uh, it, it later on we see it has a big extendable neck. It's uh, become more quadrupedal. Yeah, it like it starts moving things in and out of its. As body. we see with boomers, it becomes more animalistic and unchained, mm, less natural yet much more like organic nature. Oh, mm, beautiful evolution. Why can't we be friends with boomers? <laughs> They're all, fr- look, they're friends to humanity. Pris leaps out of the sky. Yes, I'll give you that. <laughs> yes. She's like an avenging angel from heaven come to strike down the base organic flesh of the boomer. But I thought... Been playing that- a lot of Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers recently, <laughs> which has a lot of avenging angels. But I thought the avenging angels were the bad guys in Evangelion. And we're moving on. <laughs> So she falls out, she's like, I'm going to get that she core. She does maximum strength, knuckle buster punches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can see like the, the impact of it sends her backwards like a laser light. Mm. And she's just like, bam! But she doesn't destroy it. She's like, I thought that's where the core would have been. But it's not. Uh-oh, no one knows where the core is. So then I think Nene is like, I'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, so she is in the, um, she's still in the call centre. Mm-hmm. Then this other unnamed AD police stooge just spends the rest of the, her scenes in the episode like leaning over her cubicle being like, should you be doing that? I'm not seeing anything and I'm not saying anything. It's just, he's just there being like, hey, what are you doing? He's Nene? basically just there to reinforce that she's breaking the rules, but he's not going to tell on her if she keeps his name out of it. Mm. It's like all human beings in a system that's unfair. It's like, no, no, I didn't see anything. I'm part of the AD police. Truly, mm. I've been dehumanized by my role in the cyber fascist police force. But in this moment, I'm showing a moment of humanity Mm. to allow you to do what needs to be done. See, real humans don't act maliciously. They act complacently. It's the system. Did we read the same article this week? What article did you read? Uh, Some article. I didn't read. Okay. I can't read. True, we forgot how to read. Yeah, I can't read. What are you talking about? Uh, Basically, the reason they're having trouble fighting this boomer, other than its massive size and offensive Mm. power and armor plating, Mm. uh, is because Genom has... Like the um, it's it's specs are classified because it's a defense 
project. It's a secret project. And Ganem doesn't want to release the specs to help them destroy it because capitalism. So Uh. Nene decides to hack into the Ministry of Defense to get the specs. (gasps) But she She can't do that. That's illegal. But she's going to do it anyway. (gasps) And there's a lot of like anime floppy disk action. Okay, she's got a huge unlabeled pile on her desk. None of them have any writing on them. She gets the right one, chucks it in. And then uses the parasite bomb. Yeah. Meanwhile, Priest is getting her shit kicked in by this boomer. Getting smashed through walls, doing flips. Just dodging as best she can. Why isn't the core there? Nene's hacking the core. You need to hold out for a little while longer. But where's the core of the boomer? Uh. So Nene and this guy are just there hacking into the Ministry of Defence. And she's like the graphical uh, depiction of her parasite bomb virus looks like, uh, say it with me if you know Nick, uh, Mr. DNA from, from Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, okay, I see it now. <laughs> what, did, what did you say? Uh, the guy from Medieval. Oh, I don't know that. You know that old game with the skeleton guy? I know of it. I've never really seen anything of it. Yeah, same. But it okay, looks like so that guy. Okay, I, yeah. yeah. Like with the face, do you mean? Yeah, with the face, where it's like all wonky. But it's got the DNA strand body of yeah, Mr. Yeah, DNA. Yeah. Boomer DNA. How much do you know about DNA? In Dr. Stingray's lab, We couldn't finish sequencing the boomer genome, so we took the missing proteins from frog DNA, and there you have it. Boomer DNA. Jeff Goldblum leans in closer as he hears about boomer DNA. It's it's basic chaos theory. I don't don't do a good Jeff Goldblum. It's, it's, It's basic chaos. Now, I specifically got a screen grab of Nene's hacking menu because I wanted to draw attention to her um, different programs. <laughs> okay. Uh, Have, are there any bangers in there? There's a couple of bangers. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run through this list. Stop me if you need to. Mm-hmm. Geohack. Cracks application. Archive. Apollo. Desktop utilities. Uh, we've seen that. Hack yeah. user. What? Parasite Bomb, the one she's engaging, but it does say Parasite Bomb. Nice. Uh, Connectics. Literally can't make this one out. It's just an F and then it's all just black squiggle. I think it's Uh, F-bomb. Maybe, yeah. Turbo Toolkit. iMac Get. Space (laughs) Duper. (laughs) Engage the Space Duper. But sir, the the Space Duper, it's, it's never been tested before. List Slice. And voodoo light for when voodoo heavy or voodoo standard is too much. (laughs) You got to arrest. And this is all under the subheading: the secret item. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love, I love fucking nineties cyberpunk hacking. It's like if you watch Ghost in the Shell, except everything that was to do with computers was dumb. Yeah. Uh, she explains the parasite bomb she's engaging is a virus that shoots high voltage electricity in a server. It's going to crash the server, but in the instance before it goes down, she's going to, uh, and I'm going to quote her here, suck up all their data at once. I have so many questions. <laughs> As someone who knows how a server like actually a works. Like a hungry, hungry hippo. She's going to suck up all that data before it crashes. <laughs> Just come in. And he says, the, other, the unnamed guy, we should name this guy, by the way. Steve. Yep, Steve AD Police. Steve AD Police. <laughs> says, hey, I'm not watching you and I don't hear anything, okay? He says, as he is watching her and talking to Isn't her. Isn't he meant to be manning his own phone? Yeah. D- shouldn't you be scrambling more units or something right yeah. now, Steve? Hmm. Nene effortlessly hacks into the Ministry of Defence and the... Uh, the graphic of all the, the servers going down does look a lot like when Dennis Nedry hacked into Jurassic Park and lowered the electric fences. Mm. So right now the Velociraptor boomers are getting loose. <laughs> uh, all the T-Rex boomers are like, rawr. And the boomers are, of course, all switching their gender to female so that they can reproduce. Mm. No, hang on. That's the opposite of what happened. All of the boom, all of the dinosaurs were female uh, and in Jurassic Park, and they evolved to male. Yeah, yeah, like the frogs that change sex. Exactly. Yes, nature found a way. Nature boomers find a way. Mm. Always finding a way. <laughs> Everyone's still trying to figure out how to get into this fucking core, and then eventually they figure it out. <laughs> And then Lina shows up. Yeah, that's right. So Pris, yeah, she's like, I need to hold out for just a bit longer. But my meter, it's running out. And we see her little battery meter on the back of her pack is looking real thin. I mean, it, 
it always looks thin no matter what. But and this thing, the boomer yeah. is, she's fighting, you know, now has like extendy, f- stretchy tentacle arms. Like that guy from Blaz Blue Cross Tag Battle, the noodle guy. Ooh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Neither, I, I remember he had big noodle arms. Okay. Yeah. Is he from regular Blaz Blue as well, or is no, he from so Ruby? No, so or is he from Persona? I think he's from Under Night in Birth. I don't those. know what that is. It's the other crossover one oh, from Blaz Blue Cross Tag. I Battle. thought that was I, maybe I does that not have? No, um, so it has uh, Blaz Blue. Yep. Rubwi. Yep. Uh, it has Persona. It has um, Under Night in Birth or whatever it is. Is that like a Fate Stay Night thing or something? No, it's it's like this other fighting game that exists. I don't know okay. what it's based uh, off, but it has that. I didn't realise there was a fourth spice yep. in the mix there. And then it has Blitz Tank, if you remember. Vaguely. Uh, I don't know what he's from, but it has a fuck-off huge tank. It's like a skull for a face yep. situation. Like That's, a boomer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then some Oh, yeah, guy. so um, hero moment. Hero of the <laughs> hour as uh, Cilia... Sorry, uh, Pris is about to get crushed by the boomer and its huge extendo arms. Mm-hmm. And then Leon, still in that same overpass... Now has a huge, like, shoulder-mounted gorse sniper cannon, which he just fucking nails it with, buying her a moment uh, of safety. And he's like, I can't believe we're covering the night sabers. And, like, this thing is, it looks like a World War II machine gun. Does it? I mean, it's like a fucking of... cyberpunk nightmare cannon to me. I mean, also that at the same time. It's, like, got, a, like, a top-loaded magazine because it would be too heavy to push them in the other mm. side kind of thing. Like, oh... Beastly. Once again, proving that Leon and Daly are all right. Well, okay. Silly, so, uh, Lina's quickly getting changed. Uh, and, okay, I've got some more computer screen action here. Oh, uh, yes. As Nene gets into the server, she's hacking the system. Uh, there's a bunch of, like, Lorem Ipsum style filler text on screen. Classic. And she's like, oh, I got it. I got the data. And she downloads the data, once again, proving that she is. Like, the least deadweight member of this team, because she's the only one who knows how to work a computer. Despite being called a deadweight team member two episodes ago. (laughs) No matter how big, all boomers have some standard specs. Mm. They're all grown from or built from the same basic... They're all built from the same DNA. Mm. Mm. That huge body is a kind of powered suit And there's like another mini boomer within it Driving it ah. So the, yeah, the guy the guy, Steve AD police leans in and is like That's, That huge body's like a suit And she's like thought you weren't fucking watching me <laughs> And he's like I'm not listening <laughs> I'm not watching No no this feels like the beginning of a beautiful friendship He said before he left the show forever <laughs> <laughs> It's like literally the cliffhanger of the episode You know what I think we're going to be good friends Actually, I'm going to go back to my home in rural Japan. Oh my god, he's that guy. (laughs) Priest is being ordered to withdraw, but then who emerges from the sky like an avenging angel? It's... Lena. Oh. Oh, and also, you know, before that, there was, um, you know, the thing, the boomer fought back with its huge powerful missiles, like... Knocking Leon and Daly off that bridge, taking out some AD police. Yeah. It starts VTOLs. shooting. It starts shooting machine guns in all directions, yeah. and everyone's like, run! It's got massive machine guns. But then everyone's so happy that Lena's arrived and she's got a spare power core for, for Pris. They do a mid air battery pack exchange mm-hmm. where Pris leaps into the air, ejects her battery, and Lena slams it into the slot, allowing Pris to win the battle she had been fighting all along. Mm. The battle. Of respect. Really all Lena did here is deliver the battery. Yeah, it's the most important job. Anyone still in Tokyo could have done that. Look, if there's one thing I've learned from <laughs> Death Stranding, it's that the delivery man it's might true. have the most important job of all. In the apocalypse, logistics is going to be one of the biggest challenges of them all. Mm. And you know why? Because we didn't keep playing Death Stranding. I did. Oh. Did you overcome the cliff? fucking love how like all the nominative determinism in that game oh but we've God. gone on about that long enough yep. Yep. repowered up Yep. full power at the boomer battle for once mm-hmm. level 6 full power at the boomer battle um, strange Pris rips through the boomer's outer shell dispo- exposing its delicious interior flesh it's, it's very like sinewy muscle. it's just meat it's full of meat it's full of meat and she pushes her way through that meat to find another smaller second boomer in there and she crushes its core. And he's all like, no. 
Release me Release from this me. flesh prison. <laughs> this literal flesh prison I that was, I'm in. I was born into it. No. <laughs> and then she won. And uh, Nene and... Sorry, uh, Pris and Lina are uh, congratulating each other on the overpass. And congratulating Nene for giving them the, the combat data. And they jetpack away. Meanwhile, Alan slash Quincy Rosenkreutz mm-hmm. is like, Mason, why can't we... Suppress the media anymore. Well, it's the Department of Defense, you know. They've kind of got their own thing going on. But I've spent all this time telling people that boomers are friends of humanity. You know I never wanted military boomers. And then Mason's like, yes, but you told me to keep the boomer division afloat. And that's what I had to do. Mason, you son of a bi- (coughs) And he just coughs. I want- Yeah, you know how hard I've tried to get- people to accept boomers as friends of humanity like the witcher i wrote that song and everything toss a coin to your boomer toss a coin to your boomer don't you remember (laughs) i was thinking about this show uh since we recorded the last episode what this show yeah okay big big whoop i know Uh, but (laughs) i like how like you know obviously the night sabers are our key protagonists yeah but i like how there's still kind of this ensemble element where you know, um, every week we check in with Leon and Daly, and yep. every week we check in with Alan. Like mm. they're all, it's kind of you kind of builds a fuller world. Yes, I think there's a lot of perspectives where you're like, but what's going on here? Oh, he's just evil. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Speaking of, he's just evil. Uh, Mason apologizes to Alan, but then as he bows, like the camera zooms in on his backlit, sinister smile. Oh. Then he leaves, and the guy that we've been referring to who to as Mason's corporate stooge, but is in fact Mason's private investigator, mm-hmm. is in his chair. Mr. Kukui, they called him. Mr. Kukui. Mr. Kukui uh, is like, Kukui. hey, I've got, I've got info for you. And he's all like, what's the info? The info is that he put the corrupted core in the military boomer, <gasps> just like Mason wanted for some reason. That's some good info that I told you about yeah. beforehand. <laughs> and he's like, money, please. And Mason's like, yes. This boomer here has your payment and like an evil, evil secretary boomer comes in and just strangles him to death and rips his head off. Oh, not yet. No, but that's the crux of the scene, right? Yeah. No, because then he does one more thing for him and then the boomer comes What's in. What's this one more thing? It's like uh, talking to Celia. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't happen quite yet. Mm. So yeah, Mason unveils his plan. He's going to use the night sabers to find the secret lab underground, underground that he's been searching for because yep. he figures they've probably got more data than him and he's not had any luck so far. Hmm. So, But why would the night sabers have more data than him? Because who knows? <laughs> um, Maceo, the butler, has cooked a delicious meal for everyone. They all congratulate each other for destroying the boomer. Oh. Nene makes some great faces in this scene. <laughs> She's very like, Oh, uh, this food is so nice. And they're like, what do you think of Marky? And they're like, if you eat too much, you won't fit in your hard suit again. And she's, she's like, like oh, God, we've all been there. <laughs> we've all wanted to fit into our favorite hard suits and then gone out for a nice lunch on the town. Then come home and like, I can't fit into my hard suit. She, also, ex- <laughs> she also exposits that she didn't bother covering her tracks uh, mm. when she was hacking in from the AD police computers. Uh, and I think the implication there is... They would never expect the AD police did it. So they, they would see that it was traced to the AD police and be like, damn, someone must have... Yeah. Someone must have manipulated the data. Mm. Basically, they're like, why didn't you just hide your track? She's like, oh, I just didn't have time. Yeah. It was more important to kill the boomer. Yeah. And they're all having dinner next to this huge... One of Celia's many huge pools. Uh, and I, I was like, ah, yes. The water, it's calm on the surface, but it holds hidden depths. Like me. Like Cilia. Oh. Like Pris. Like all of us. Like all of the characters in this show. Oh my god. Oh my god, the water is a symbol. Is it? Sure. That's good storytelling. There's so many scenes in this show of like people looking con- contemplative next to huge pools of water, you know? Could it mean something? Mm, I don't know. Mm. I don't know if I can interpret the visual language of a show like that. Mm, it is an anime, so. Uh, some more f- Nene's favourite banter of... um like honorific based banter where she's yelling at and fighting Marky because he simply called her Nene and not Nene Sama. Which is just like, for God's sake, for God's sake, you two. Get it together, man. Come on. Um, and they go downstairs and they have a developing romance plot moment where they stand close together and look at computers and they both get embarrassed and she yells at him. And she's all like, you 
you Barker or something. I'll never like you. I can't believe I like you so much. <laughs> oh, if only he wasn't. And then so she spends young. the rest of uh, this week's episodes being like, he's fifteen. If only he wasn't younger than me. How old is she? She's like 19. She's 19? Or is she 17? I hope she's 17, because otherwise that's a concerning age gap. Jesus Let's Christ. confirm that. But, of course, there is a, the other factor about Marky that we'll talk about yeah. soon as well. Oh, if only he wasn't younger than me. Oh, this solves that problem. 18. She's 18. She's is, 18. She, Nene is 18. Yep. What? It's on the cusp, I guess. But, like, she does not look 18. No. Unless that's just... It's what... like how in um, Final Fantasy fourteen, mm. all of the supporting characters are so much younger than they should be. Mm. So, like, t- two of your twin friends are, like, teenagers. Uh, the one guy who looks really old and speaks in old-timey language all the time yeah. uh, is, like, 29. <laughs> He's younger than me. Jesus. Uriange is his name. Uriange? Uriange. Uriange. God damn it, I gotta play some Final Fantasy XIV. I'll play it with you. Oh, this is dangerous. This is dangerous now. Nick, I have not and never will recommend you play an MMO, <laughs> but I will just say, if you did, I would play it with you. Fair enough. Marky bikes back to Nigel's and who's leaving <gasps> but Dr. Brian J. Mason. What? What the hell is Mason doing here? And Marky recognises him, which is sinister, uh, and they recognise each other, mm-hmm. but then Nigel is like, no, he's just my assistant. You must be mistaken. I don't know what you're talking about, boy. Anyway, think about what I offered you, Nigel. Mm. Got the names in this show. I mean, Linna is a fine name. Sure, yeah. It's not. But Pris is, well, Pris isn't really much of a name, although it does have meaning behind it. He's the first. Pris. Pris is the first one. As we alluded to earlier, the detective uh, tells Celia that Mason is looking for the lab, setting her on her own hunt for the lab, which is kind of the crux of next episode's plot. And he's like diverted all these corporate resources to the hunt. (gasps) Celia spills her drink on herself and then falls to the ground, like clutching herself and shaking because of this terrifying lab. And then she looks dead into the camera and is like, (gasps) Galatea. Galatea. Gal... More on that in predictions. Hey! So, uh, and then the, yeah, the guy is like, I did what you wanted, Mason. I got her looking for the lab. And then he's like, Mason is like, yep, anyway, time to have my boomer kill you. So picks them up, strangles them to death. And then as, as like, we don't see anything, but as Mason is walking out of the room, we do hear like a squelching sound. Mm. So R.I.P. that guy. Uh, the stooge, gone forever. He tried to be too many agents. Hmm. He played both sides. Multiple and still, times. And still lost. It's a tale as old as time itself. And then to round out this episode, they packed a lot into this episode. They really did. Nene runs a search on the family of Celia Stingray, finds a photo of Marky uh, where he looks exactly the same from 2030. <gasps> but the year's 2040. Oh my God. Could the photo have been mislabeled? Oh, maybe. But then there's more photos where Celia is young and Marky is the same. <gasps> but that's impossible. And she's like, what is he? And then great times at Nigel's house as he is drinking bottle after bottle of wild turkey. I think we, I think I was just like, yeah, it's always a good time at Nigel's house. Yeah. And he's Ma- just sitting in a dark room. Marky says, what did Mason, what did you tell Mason about Celia? And he says, shut up and throws the bottle at her, at him. And then when we cut back to him, he's got another full bottle. And he's just downing it. Yeah. like, God damn Drink kids. It straight from the bottle. So then next episode. Adam Hart Mother. Adam Hart Mother. Uh, we open with Celia doing some detective work, tracking down an old acquaintance of her father's, Dr. Shan. Dr. Shan. Who gives her the skinny on the underground lab. Gives her the skinny? Yeah. Ugh. Doesn't sound good. Well, that's an expression. Is it an expression? Yep. Ugh. Why the hell is that an expression? I don't... I'm not the expression rules man, Nick. I'm not the king of expressions. Well, I need someone to be. <laughs> uh, and, you know, to cut a long story short, he's like, Mason's using all this underground modelling from the quake to find the lab, but if his data is even 1% off, he'll never find it. I've got more data. He's only got points. I've got lines. So I'll help you find it. There was some crazy word that he used as well. Uh, they talk about releasing the seal of evil. Galatea. G- Galatea. gal gal Just gals being pals. <laughs> <laughs> Just Galateas being gala oh, they're pals. Fun. Mason's looking for Cilia's Utena uh. box set. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're just very good gals. <laughs> Uh, So, yeah, Shan basically just says, look, I've got lines, he has dots, lines. 
And Tilly is like, before Mason finds the lab, I will seal it again. Seal the evil within it. Mm. Uh, Pris is hanging out uh, at the uh, the mechanics and getting her bike tuned up. And Nene comes and sees her. Marky's like, do you want to hang out? And she's like, no, I want to talk to Pris. Um, under no circumstances do I want to hang out with you, Marky. You are very unsettling me right now. I'd like to talk to Pris, though. Pris, come with me, please. So they bike away somewhere. Somewhere nice and safe and secure. And I believe they share a couple cans of, of hot lemonade. Of fucking hot lemonade. It doesn't exist, okay? Hot lemonade does not exist. So, yeah, Nanny spends this whole episode mostly off screen digging into Celia's past. Mm. She's like, I looked into it. I couldn't find out much about it. Do you know much about her? And Pris is like, no, I don't really care. I'm just here to get paid. I'm the night savers. I'm the night savers. Yeah, I'm the night I'm the one who gets most of the kills. But I'm the one who found the core. Yeah, and look who went in to get the core, kid. Come on now. Know who you are. Nene speculates forms. that um, Celia's reason for starting the night is all about her father, Dr. Stingray, the person who developed boomers. Ooh. Celia has an instinctive hatred of boomers, doesn't she? Is that because Dr. Stingray is the one who created them? And Pris says, I don't know, but why are you asking? Well, it's just that... Never mind. I'm I can't an anime. talk about it yet. It's, it's an anime. I we can't. can't talk about our problems. Yeah, in every anime... Just talk. I think... Every single problem could be solved if instead of being like, I can't. They were just like, well, it's because of this very obvious fact. Like, what? So then next time she's at work, she is looking up Dr. Stingray and she hacks into his secure files and sees something that makes her jaw drop. But we don't oh. see what it is yet. Gasp. Meanwhile, Celia has gone to Nigel and is getting him to help with her experiments. She figured out the huge boomer eating creature from a few episodes ago the big centipede boy yeah the gluss the gluss i uh, was using sonar to track boomers underground and feed on them uh-huh. so she got nigel to bring in a sonar machine and they point it at Lina's hard suit mm-hmm. and use it to, to confirm they can detect that yep i'm with you i'm following you mm. what do you think and about why that the fuck Nick? does that work <laughs> so is that big gluss boy digging around looking for the boomers and so she's using that same frequency yeah. to pinpoint, oh, there are boomers here. There's a hard suit here. Uh-huh. And then she's going to combine that with the data she got from Dr. Shan. <gasps> Dr. Shan. Which has um, given her 27 likely sites for the, uh, the Wiz lab. Well, well, well. Uh, to locate it. So this is all laid out later in the episode, but basically she gets the night savers to go, you know, I'll give you extra money if um, you... Visit each, if each of you visit some of these sites, use the sonar to check for the lab, and then report back to me. Yeah. Any thoughts, Nick? Seems logically sound. <laughs> okay. I, I can't have, find any easy holes within that logic of go down, have a look, see what it is, and then come back. I, I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. It does, however, feel like uh, it feels like Cilia is. Uh, she really wants what's in that lab, or she wants it destroyed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Galatea. What could that mean? Yeah. What do you know about mythology, Nick? I recognise the name Galatea. I can't remember what it's from or what it refers to. Do you want some science but facts? I think it might be like the goddess of Earth or something like that. Ah, uh, you're way off. Or like something of creation, maybe? Is it from Power Rangers? I mean, it might be, but not initially. Mm. What's a Galatea? Galatea. Mythology. From Wikipedia. <gasps> Tell me more. Galatea. She who is milk white is a name popularly applied to a statue of ivory by Pygmalion of Cyprus, which then came to life in Greek mythology. And in modern English, the name usually alludes to that story. The statue that came to life. Mm. Oh, like a boomer. Oh my God, like a golem. Oh. It but, all ties together. But does it have the Hebrew word for uh, death written on its forehead? There's just no way to know. Mm. The story of Pygmalion appeared earliest in the Hellenistic work Philostephanus' History of Cyprus. It is retold in Ovid's Metamorphosis where the king Pygmalion is made into a sculptor who fell in love with an ivory statue he had crafted with his own hands. Mm. In answer to his prayers, the goddess Aphrodite brought it to life and united the couple in marriage. Huh. That's weird. So, wait, so is this, is this a good story or a bad story? Like, what's the takeaway? <laughs> Fall in love with a statue. It could come to life. It'll be great. You'll love it. Hmm. Well, let's look at uh, the subpage Galatea Greek myth. It takes the uh, phrase, love your work, to a whole new level. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if you love your job, you'll never fuck a day in your life. 
Unless you're a statue maker. In which case, it's unlike Donkey Kong. Ugh. Donkey Kong, of course, being a statue that was brought to life. Well, from the Donkey Kong TV show, we know that uh, all statues can come to life. Why do we know that from the Donkey Kong TV show? Well, I'm pretty sure Donkey Kong was turned into a statue, and then they brought him back, didn't they? Wasn't he frozen or something? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the bad CG Donkey Kong uh, show. The great CG Donkey Kong show. How dare you. Didn't they freeze Donkey Kong into a statue or something at one point? And then brought him back? I mean, you've probably seen more of this show than I have. I have haven't. Speculate is, about plot. This is just me being like, didn't they do this at one point? Surely. Not that I'm aware of. All oh, right. Well, maybe they. Maybe but, it was a coconut. You know, the amount of things I don't know about that show <laughs> far outweigh the things I do, mm. which the things that I do know are mostly Diddy for the coconut, the coconut for Diddy. Mm. A bold, uh, progressive statement for the time. <laughs> Expound on that. <laughs> well, when you consider that the coconut for Diddy, the. The, <laughs> the coconut symbolizes. <laughs> capitalism. <laughs> and Diddy represents humanity. Okay. Yeah. It's about valuing your monkeys more than your monies. You know? People, not projects. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Pygmalion, not pigmentation. You know? Love your people, not your paint. Well, Nick, thanks for filling time while I tried and failed to find a uh, brief... uh, A summary, if you will. Brief summary of the uh, Galatea myth. Uh, But in essence, it's all about a... A statue that comes to life, and they're all like, yay! Yeah. She who is milk white. She who is milk... Because she came from ivory. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. She Interesting. Came... <laughs> she came from milk. <laughs> <laughs> now, my child, be born from milk. You will be my full cream high. <laughs> like an Uruk high, but it's like full cream high. Okay. Uruk high low. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we you, got, got, you yeah. got there. Yeah. God, <laughs> it's like... All the wizards in Lord of the Rings are now just different uh, creams of milk. And so Saruman is like the high-low wizard. Gandalf, the white, is full cream. But when he's Gandalf the grey, he's skim. Uh, What are the wizards are there in Lord of the Rings? Uh, Radagast the brown. Radagast the brown is chalk milk. Mm, Wise. I didn't think you could Mm. throw that needle. Mm. Uh, Tom Bombadil's almond milk. He's not a wizard. (laughs) (laughs) I am done with this riff. Okay. Okay, let's move on. So, in essence, they're all just like... It's, it's, it's the golem again. It's yeah. another mythological route for robots. Yeah. It's some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But this one refers to an individual rather than a, a construct. Ah. So, we'll get, back, we'll get to that in due course, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Pris and Lina have a lovely coffee together. Uh, and then they have a whispered conversation over the roar of her engine so no one can listen in. And they're like, don't you think that Celia is a bit suspicious? Should we look into Celia's private affairs? No. No. No, 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 no. Like her, she has her own reason. Sorry, like her, we all have our own reasons. Mm. So let's respect that. And yeah, Pris is like, look, we all have our reasons. I'm getting paid money. <laughs> yes. And uh, the greatest shot from the so, show, yes. which they're, is Pris looking over her shoulder. They're really in close, like yep. whispering over the roar of the engines. They can mm. hear and be quiet. Uh, it's real in close, real like... If you weren't wearing a full head helmet with only um, the visor slot open, real easy kiss distance. <laughs> uh, and then Pris just wordlessly, uh, well, she says, no matter what private reason Celia has, I think it's okay. And then just wordlessly presses the button so her visor descends and speeds up. Well, no, Lynn is like, but don't you think it's worth knowing something? And then she just... Bye. It is a perfect comeback. A new... Private investigator or corporate stooge for Mason comes to visit Nigel. And Nigel's all like, stay here, kid. I think Nene shows up? Mm, maybe? Yeah, Nene runs in. Yep. They just pass each other, but she doesn't take note of this Agent Smith looking motherfucker. Yeah, so as Nigel goes off to talk with him, Nene and Marky are talking in the garage. Having Coco. Oh. She, she asks about his past. He confirms he's 15. Talk, they talk a bit about how he never knew Dr. Stingray and how Celia has changed a lot since she was little. And then he's like, oh, what were you like back then? And he's like, oh, me? I never changed. Awkward silence pervades the garage. Yep. And that's the end of that scene. Yeah. I never changed. <laughs> <laughs> Mason is talking to another enigmatic figure in a lift. Uh, I think he's some sort of crime boss. But he's got, he's got like, 
round John Lennon black glasses like a blind man. It looks a bit like uh, Nemoro from Utena, but older. You mean from Nemoro Memorial Hall? Yeah, the, the very same. <laughs> Which one was Nemoro? The evil therapist of the Black Rose arc. Purple hair. Was he purple hair guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had another name as well, but he was yeah. also Nemoro. Yeah, he was Nemoro, but also not Nemoro. M- Mikage or something like something that. Something like Mikagi. that. Yeah. Good filler. Not filler. Actual content. Yeah. Every time I think about that arc, I just think about, um, what's his name? Sad green guy living with... Sionji. Yeah, living, living with... with um, a Wakaba. Yeah. And it's just like, what a weird fucking arc. Oh, that was fucking... That was great. Oh, so funny. Very weird, but funny. I saw a good tweet the other day. Just just Utena tweet out of the blue on my non-anime timeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, being like, people who um, say, man, the kids in Utena should really go to therapy forget that the whole Black Rose arc was about the villain weaponizing therapy against mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, to be fair, worked very Incredibly well. Incredibly well. If only they had a better therapist. <laughs> Hashtag okay. pick your therapist better. The pivotal scene of this episode oh. as... Celia is laying out to the other night savers her plan to search for the lab. Yep. And she's all like, look, we've got 27 spots, but I will pay you double. Lena's like, I'll help because there's something dangerous down there. So I'm happy to help protect the city. Yep. Chris is like, I'm getting paid. And then Nene is like, I know I've, the truth. I've got a lot of hard questions to ask you. <laughs> she basically like abruptly turns this into the accusation parlor. Like, why aren't you I <laughs> Which is a term we use frequently on my uh, now defunct other podcast. Mm. Celia, I've investigated your personal data and Marky doesn't exist. <gasps> there's no record of his adoption or birth. Uh, there's no trace of him. Dr. Stingray didn't have a son, so who the fuck is he? What do you mean he didn't have a son? So there's a long silence and she's like, I can't answer that question. I'm really sorry. And it's like, well, what the hell's in this lab? Is then? he related to the lab? And she's like, you didn't look into the lab, did you? And she's like, I sure did. The confidential files were hard to crack, but let me tell you, I got in. I went through the AD police mainframe. I went through the Department of Defense's entire backlog. I know how to get into and shit. She lays out that the year before the quake, mm-hmm. uh, the Bioscape lab where Dr. Stingray worked was bought out by Genom, who started, took over Boomer development. Mm. This was after the core had been created by Dr. Stingray. But, but when, mass production had already started. Yeah. But then there was a mysterious accident at the lab and uh, she found the records of deployment of AD police troops to the lab. <gasps> lab staff and AD police personnel died. And then Ganem, and this is the big bombshell, mm. the... Uh, Pun intended, earth-shattering revelation. (laughs) (laughs) Is that Ganem, in response to this incident, Mm -hmm. deployed experimental earthquake manipulation technology. No! And brought about the 2033 earthquake that devastated cyber Tokyo, killing thousands, millions, who knows? Oh, Oh my god. To contain whatever this incident was. Celia, And the call was made by... Dr. Sting? No. Oh. Alan. Quincy Rosenkreutz. The head of Ganem himself. Yeah. Celia's like, that is true. We did cause the earthquake to go off. Not yeah. we. Well, I mean, she was know. a child. Yeah, but she was like, look, the earthquake was, yes, yes, it was in response to the, to the lab. Pris loses her composure for the first time in the show. And is like, what the fuck? How many people died in that earthquake? But she still signs on for the job. Mm-hmm. So she's like, why? Nene continues, like, what What could have happened in this lab that was so fucking intense that Genem destroyed the whole city? And Celia's like, I can't tell you. So uh, she she does say, I can tell you Maki wasn't involved, but that's not good enough for Nene, and she storms out. Literally sprints out of the room. Good animation and in this we, bit. We see her sprinting out of the whole building, and the Agent Smith-looking uh, private eye guy investigator guy, corporate stooge guy, is there. Who was chatting with Nigel. Keeping an eye on the Silky Doll slash the Night Saber base. Mm -hmm. So clearly Mason knows who they are, where they are. Mm -hmm. Uh, That stooge man, Mm -hmm. or should I say that Smithman. Sure. He radios into Mason. He's like, the Night Sabers are on the move. Yep. And the Night Sabers are indeed on the move as Nene and, uh, sorry, Alina and Pris suit up. They agree they'll do three sites a night each and figure out this whole operation over the next five nights. Find the underground lab, solve it, easy peasy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, let's go. 
and they jetpack away. The guy watches them jetpack away and Mason is like, ha 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 ha, it's all going according to my secret plans. Not Celia's secret plans that she thinks she's manipulating me in, my secret plans that I'm manipulating her in, even though we never interact. That's what I really liked about this episode. Like, Mason and Celia are both using each other's information for the same target for different purposes. Mm. And like Mason has the upper hand because he knows that C- he's using Cilia. He knows that she knows yeah. where it is. He's got one more layer of knowing. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I guess. And also he knows that Cilia's private eye contact who's been leaking her information is dead. Also that, yeah. By his hand, not his literal hand. The literal hands of the boomers he had mm. to explode his head. The uh, metaphorical hand of his boomer's His hands. authority. The hand of his Ooh. authority. But it's a literal hand of a boomer that... The invisible hand of middle management. Ooh, the darkest hand. <laughs> so, Nick, what are our highlights and lowlights in these two episodes? My highlight has to be the reveal that the earthquake was caused by the Stingray Lab. Great. Also great to have a scene where, like, a non-action scene where Nene was fully serious for once. Mmm. And she's Frequently like, the comedy character. Yeah, and she's like, I can't trust you. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Damn. Throwing, throwing down the gauntlet. Yeah. Big status change. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, but no, it was good. It was very like, this explains why a massive earthquake happened in the middle of Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> Japan's never known been known to have well, like the, earthquakes. Yeah, but not in the middle of like Tokyo out of nowhere, you know? I think that's how earthquakes work, isn't it? They come out of nowhere. But it's like, they they happen at certain points in, like, Japan or or in, like, California or whatever. Like, there are little earthquakes around the place, but not, like, ground-shattering, like, completely destroy-the-city earthquakes, you know? Normally it's like things fall off shelves, not the shelf falls on people. I mean, most of the time, otherwise there wouldn't be cities there. Exactly. But I think there's, I think there's always potential. There's, there's talk mm. in, like, you know, obviously I don't live in America, but there's, there's talk in mm. California a lot of the big one that, w- that will probably come someday. Oh, yikes. Okay. <laughs> Is that just Americans being like, oh, the big one's coming? Well, it was a really significant factor in making earthquakes just things that fall off shelves. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. It is like earthquake proofing your building designs and yes. things like that. Yes. Well, it I is mean, my that's... understanding as someone who lives in Perth, Western Australia, like earthquake minimum capital of the world. We literally have never had an earthquake. <laughs> Although, weirdly, there are earthquakes up north. It's all just about like tectonic plate positioning, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, my yeah. understanding of the matter. Yeah. Literally, if a big earth plate hits another one, it just it just makes big, big earth. Big Earth it, move. Big Earth move. Yeah. My highlight uh, is Mason finally putting all of his mysterious plans in motion mm. after spending a dozen episodes just being like, yes, Mr. Rosenkreutz, of course, Mr. Rosenkreutz, to self. I'll get you, Mr. Rosenkreutz. <laughs> <laughs> just that sinister grin finally paying yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, uh, lowlights. Hmm. I want to say, like, the entire Marky conversation with Nene just went on. The, just... um, the what's the deal with your past one? Yeah, because, like, it started off really awkwardly. It was like, can I get you a coffee or just a cocoa for you? And then she doesn't... She, res- she doesn't respond. She just waves. She just waves and then walks away. It takes, like, ten seconds for him to go to the door, open it, and then be like, oh, by the way. And it's like, what? How long do I have to wait for these things? You know? And that's a bit of a stretch for a low light, but goddamn. Yeah, good couple of episodes. Yeah. My low light, I would probably say... Well, sure as hell not going to be Leon and Doyle fighting the big old boomer. Famously named Daly. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give my low light, my, my, I'm going to award my honorary low light, as we said, good episodes, mm. to unnamed AD police collaborator. <laughs> you mean Steve? Yeah. Oh, Steve. For taking an active interest in saving the day and then never being seen again. <laughs> No, he didn't take any... He didn't see anything? He, he didn't was hear anything? He was loudly denying his active interest. He <laughs> thinks the boy protests too much. I do love that he was like, I don't see or hear anything. I right? just love if he got fired for the hacking off screen. <laughs> Someone did it. Where were you? Nowhere. I didn't see or hear anything. All right, so that's some bullshit. <laughs> the chief just like fucking pulls out his service pistol and shoots him in the head. <laughs> this is what you get, AD police officers. Look closely. Okay, so Nick. Yes. The sort of plot to date is coming to a head. Mm. 
Uh, and uh, I don't mind telling you because it's uh, relevant to the structure of our podcast. Yep. That from the next couple of episodes, there's like a major shift in status quo away from more ser- more uh, episodic boomer of the week encounters mm-hmm. to more serialized building oh. problem narrative. I see. So everyone's going underground to look for the lab. Mm-hmm. Something called. Galatea, Galatea is yeah. in the mix. Galatia. Maki looked the same 10 years ago. Mm, perhaps even more. At, le- well, at least 10 years ago, <laughs> yeah. Uh, something horrible is in the lab that killed people and caused Genom to create a massive earthquake. So much so it destroyed a city. What will happen next time on Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040 in the episode entitled Google.com slash... Bubblegum plus Tokyo plus 2040 episode names. Thought I kept the tab open this time, but I forgot. <laughs> shock treatment. Ooh, shock treatment. Hmm. So they're all underground. There's no, there's, there's no real, I was about to say there's no boomer like thing about to pop up, but that's every episode. There's never <laughs> a boomer thing that's going to pop up. It's always like, oh, look, a boomer. Oh, they sure do be being boomers. Yep. So, I guess the question is, are there boomers underground? In the lab? Like, from the lab, I guess you could say? Like, that, prototypes? Yeah, or? that have, like, evolved. Oh, they've gone feral. Like, like the big glouse thing. Yeah. Yeah. But... They formed their own utopic society down there. Yeah, something like that, right? Where... It, or, like, an Hello, ecosystem. We have evolved beyond what you call boomers. Yeah, some... We are humanity. Oh no. Yoko Taro presents Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're all going to feel very bad at the end when it's like, would you like to continue watching Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040? It's like, yeah, sure I was. Like, great. You'll need to overload your television <laughs> with high voltage electricity. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't high enough. Your television is broken, but you can't progress. But I, I lost everything. You did. Do you think it was meaningful? Nick. <laughs> yes. I think... Okay, so I reckon un- underground, there's going to be some kind of ecosystem that has evolved from that lab. Sure. Genom has either known about it long enough. And by Genom, you mean Mason? No, by Genom, I mean Alan. Okay. Alan has known he about it. He thinks it's beautiful. He's like, don't you understand? They're friends. They've been helping the soil underground so that everything becomes richer and more beautiful. Sure. They've been assisting with... Like, all the underground networks to make sure nothing fails while no one's looking. Really, those are the real boomers. Yeah, they're basically the doozers from Fraggle Rock. Exactly. Right, so they're like some underground secret thing that Alan's been like, see, this is my evidence that I've waited to show off. Or, no one has seen them in that long and they've just developed their own, like, autonomous ecosystem that's like a jungle, right? Okay. And And then what happens? So then they'll go down, they'll find... Uh, the lab, and they'll be like, "Cool, so here's the lab, but the lab's big." So sure, big lab. Yes, yeah, so we did like, see a big lab in the flashbacks. Mm, so there's probably going to be at least two episodes where they're going through this lab, and they're like, "You have to come back," and then something will happen at the top, and then they'll go back down into the lab. And okay. Like, okay. Now we know that Genom is coming back because they tracked us and stuff like that. But and what is Galatea, the woman made of milk? Maybe it's Celia. Just gonna let that slide. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, maybe it's Celia's mother. Ah, interesting. Who, who they were trying to create a perfect replica. Because remember, of. she died from mm. you know brain cancer or whatever yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. So maybe they're trying to bring her back or make a perfect clone. But to do that requires getting a lot of milk. Well, in unless a tube. you forget, they had to put Celia to sleep for a while as part of the experiments. Wait, did they? Yeah, because like now that your mum is gone, would you like to help me with your experiments? You'll just need to go to sleep for a little while. Oh. That early flashback. Oh, yikes. Yeah, I remember now. Listen to Papa. And it wasn't Mason. It was actually... It was Papa. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe it'll be... So maybe it is to do with cloning. Oh, see, there's so many theories yeah. now. Like, it, could, it probably has something to do with cloning and boomers are actually, like, brain-mapped people who just so happen to be robots. Well, that would help to explain all the meat, right? Yeah, it might... Well... Doesn't it help to explain the meat, but it does help to explain why the boomers all have different voices. I'm going to let that slide. Yeah. I'm not going to interrogate that yeah. statement. But something like all of the dead lab techs are actually all the different oh, they're boomers. they're just being fed into like the boomer production lines yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and one more question. Yes. What did 
Mason see Nigel about? Mm. Uh, Keep in mind it set Nigel drinking pretty heavily that night. Yeah. Maybe Nigel let loose where the night sabers lived or like who they were or something like that. I mean, Agent Smith man was outside there. Yeah, outside their, base their little now. place. Um, also, maybe he's in with Mason to find the lab, not Celia to find the lab. Okay. So maybe Celia is like, I have to do this on my own. Nigel, just make me the suits. But Nigel's been playing them for a fiddle while... Playing them for a fiddle? Yep, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah. He's been playing them for a fiddle the whole time. Yeah, haven't you been playing them for a fiddle? They played us for a goddamn fiddle. You just see Snake there being like, the fuck did you say? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they'll, they'll, they'll probably... That, I reckon Nigel will be playing with Mason more so than with so he's Silk. Gonna, he's going to betray them. Well, not betray, but yes. Okay. Um, At least betray their trust. Exactly. Exactly. He's going to be like, Mason, this was never part of the deal. Ah, yes. And he's like, you must have noticed. Of course I knew. Pulls out another bottle of whiskey. But that's... Um, yeah, so that's Wrench. probably what his... <laughs> Marky Wrench! Bonk! Um, cool. Well, we'll yeah. find out next time for probably the last podcast episode we do on Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040 until we have finished with the new batch of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part yes. 6, Stone Ocean. Yes. Uh, one day we will have a new theme song for one of these two shows by uh, Milk Juice. May, uh, yep. But until that day... To be continued. continued.